ask that you will speak your word to us within these few minutes that we have. Help us to hear you clearly. And I thank you, Lord, for everyone that will stand on this pulpit to minister your word. Thank you that you have prepared them powerfully. We thank you, Lord, that none of your word will fall on ground, that it will fulfill the purpose for which they're being sent out. In Jesus' glorious name, we have prayed. Turn your Bibles with me, please. 2 Kings chapter 6. 2 Kings chapter 6. And when my wife was talking about entrapment uh, earlier, it was very interesting because I came here to pray on Monday. And when I was here, I, no, actually, it was last week, Thursday. So I just came, I just lay down on this place, and my job was just, I was just praying for every single one of you. And I've been praying, it was close to maybe about an hour, thereabout. And the Holy Spirit said to me to pray that God would deliver his people from the spirit of entrapment. I did not share that with my wife. I did not say anything about it. I was just, I, I even forgot that I've already prayed about that. And, and I began to pray. This was last week, Thursday. I, I was just praying right here that, Lord, whatever the spirit of entrapment represents in the life of your people, we trust you that you will deliver your people from every spiritual, emotional, mental, or economic entrapment in their life. And when my wife was about leading prayer this morning, he said, the Lord has delivered the church from the spirit of entrapment. Isn't God amazing that he speaks a word and he confirms it? We just give him all the praise and all the glory. The story that I'm about to just share with you, uh, I was initially going to title this, pick it up and work it. Now, I, I, then I, I stopped and I thought, some people might think, you know what? We can't deal any longer. Pastor is now listening to Missy Elliott and is now telling us to work it. <laughs> no. So I just changed that. And I, some people are thinking, oh, oh, wow, Pastor, no, Missy Elliott. Duh. <laughs> so I changed it to pick it up and maximize it. Talk to someone and say, pick it up and maximize it. Pick it up and max. And I think when we heard the testimonies today, I think that exactly just already preached it. That some people, even though they've been away for five years, they picked it up and they maximized it. And I'm seeing God, whether you're a parent, whether you're a professional, wherever you are in your sphere of life right now, I'm seeing God enabling you as I round off this series on reality, capacity, and capability. I'm seeing God enabling you to pick it up and maximizing it. So picking it up and maximizing it. I ask you to define your reality, enhance your capacity, and uh, develop your capability. And I can't go into all of that now because of our time. The story in this Second Kings chapter 6, from verse 1 to 7, very interesting story. The Bible says that sons of prophet, these sons of prophet, they've been living with Elisha for a while. And one day they said to Elisha, this place that we live in is too small for us. And I'm praying that God will give you a dream. A dream that will be too big for you to achieve by your own strength. A, be, a dream that will be too... Michelangelo said this. I pray that I will always live to dream bigger than I can even achieve. Wow. For a man that painted the Sistine Chapel. And he said, I pray that we always dream bigger than I can ever imagine. I pray that God will give, someone said, the day you died, it's not the day that your purpose ended. It is the day you stop dreaming. I pray that God will give us spiritual dreams. I pray that God will give us economic dreams and mental and emotional dreams that will birth the faithfulness of God in our lives. Whether you're a parent, I pray that you would dream of great things for your children. I don't know how many of you know a guy called Ben Carson. Ben Carson was a man that was called, I mean, they, they called his hand, the, 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 the healing hands. And Ben Carson, and for some of you that might be thinking, well, maybe my life would have been better if my dad was present. Ben Carson's dad was not present. 
And yet Ben Carson had a mother who was spent, in fact, the only, the only opportunity for them to read was to go and use the public library. Ben Carson's mother was a woman who knew God. And she would go on her knees and begin to declare prophetic great things over the life of her children. And it's not a, an unusual, I mean, it's not a surprise that in 1980s, Ben Carson became the first neurosurgeon to carry out a separation of semi-swings. I pray that you will dream for your children. I pray that, because sometimes we, we live as if it's just about ourselves. I pray you will dream for your generations to come. I pray you will dream to achieve great things for God. I pray you will dream to see your husband become a better person. That you will dream and see your wife become a better person. I pray you will dream and see your job become an oasis where God can do amazing things. And so they came and they said, this place that we live in is too small for us. And I said, this is a place of purpose to dream. This place where we live is too small for us. At some point in your life, I, I pray that you will start to get anxious. Not anxious in a negative way, but I know the Bible said, do not be anxious. Some might be saying, okay, that's it. This pastor is not even preaching the word right. The kind of anxiety I'm talking about is that you will begin to dream and be thinking, Lord, you can do more. You can do more through me. They said the place where we're living is too small for us to be. And they're asking the prophet if the prophet will be willing to come with them. And, and when, I, when I kept thinking about dreams, I, I, I was asking God that, Lord, would you help me to stay focused as I dream? Would you help me to stay in line with your will as I dream? Because one of the stories that put the fear of God in my mind is found in Colossians chapter 4, verse 14. Colossians chapter 4, verse 14. There was a man called Damas. And when Paul was writing letters, letters to, the, to the Christians in Colossae, Paul was saying at, at the end of that letter when he was writing, so you could tell that Paul had two other companions who were with him when he was writing a letter to the church in, in um, you know, to the Colossians. Paul said, look the physician and Demas, your brothers, they send greetings to you. So Paul was simply saying, the letter that I was writing to the Colossians were written accompanied by Luke, the physician, and Demas who was a brother. And so there was no way you could read the letter to the Colossians, which was written about AD 61. There was no way you would read the letter to the Colossians that you would not mention the name of Demas. Because Demas was there with Paul when the letter was being written. Demas was an active member of the church. Demas was a solid Christian. Demas was someone who was there with the great apostle Paul. Fast forward five years. By the time Paul was writing a, a pastoral epistle to Timothy in 66 to 67 AD, Paul made this Really, really sorrowful statement. When you are coming, bring Mark. For Demas had forsaken me because he loved this present world. And my heart sank. My heart sank and this kind of statement keep me on my toes to remind me that the fact that you are on fire today, if you are not careful... Let he that think he stands, let him be well, lest he fall. Because really, we don't serve God one Sunday and think that we're singing kumbaya to heaven. We serve God when it is convenient and when it is not convenient. We serve God when it is not, when it's not convenient to do so. We, we serve God with our life when it is not convenient to do so. If you're waiting till a time to serve God only when it is convenient, be careful lest you fall. Demas was so on fire for God. So much that when the letter to Colossians was written, he was there. But by the time Paul wrote to Timothy, do you know what it means that he loved this present world? Paul didn't say that they must love to have holidays. There's nothing wrong with that. Paul didn't say they must wanted to just enjoy and dress trendy. But it means that the love for the world became higher than the, world, the love for God. Wow. And so when I think about this, when I'm dreaming, I'm not just dreaming about what I want to achieve. I'm dreaming about what God can achieve through me. 
Because many times we dreamt about what we want to achieve and we dream God out of it. I'm dreaming so that you don't get it wrong. That, oh, pastor said we should dream. Okay, I want to achieve. No, I'm talking about dreaming of what God can do through me. Because in him, with him, is all my life. Without him, I can do nothing. But the good news in that same letter to Timothy, which I found again surprising, which gives me comfort, was that Paul then said in verse 12 of that 2 Timothy chapter 4, said, when you're coming, bring Mark. Because I find him profitable for ministry. Mark what? The one that caused trouble in Acts chapter 15. The one that made Paul and Barnabas to go their separate ways. Mark that no Christian wanted to touch because he was a deserter. Mark that nobody wanted to relate with because he was such an annoying Christian. He's not the person you ever asked to lead prayer meeting. He was a worthless brother. So much that Paul said, I'm, I can't have anything to do with it. But towards the end of Paul's life, the one that was worthless because became the one that was mightily used. I love God so much, which means the story of my life has not ended. I might be in a place of weakness right now, but when God is done with me, I will be the one that will lead the strength in his church. And listen, don't ever look down at anybody because you are looking at where they are right now and God is looking at where he could take them to. Don't look at anybody and think that that, that brother is not even born again. That sister is not even saying, look at the way she's even dressed. Look at the way she's even talking. Whoa. I thought they, they, they said they have believers in this church. Whoa, look at that. But I love the way God rewrites. You're reading the chapter 2 of the story and the books of my life. You haven't seen chapter 15 yet. You haven't seen what God is going to do through my life. Today I was the soul persecuting everything that represents godliness. You haven't seen where the handkerchief of my clothes will heal the sick. When I become the poor of God. Bring Mark for I found him useful to ministry. The same Mark that was a deserter that left. Whether you are a student, whether you are a parent, wh wherever you are right now, the dream of God is big for your life. And if you messed up, jacked up right now, God can still bring change into our life. Because he is, say with me, God, God. is in the business of restoring men. How? Huh? I love God. He's in the business of restoring me. I learned this a long time ago because I know where God brought me from just like every single one of you. And he said, never look down at anybody because when I'm done with them, they will be like a, a brand plucked out of fire. Hallelujah. So the first thing they said, this place is too small for me. And I said, this is purposely dream. The second thing they said, and the, the prophet said, I will go with you. Why? Because they asked the prophet. We can't go on this endeavor. And I know some of you are thinking about expansion. You're thinking about enlargement. You're thinking about increase. You're thinking about multiplication. You're thinking about getting married. You're thinking about buying new house. You're thinking about investment. You're thinking about picking new career. You're thinking about choices. You're thinking about different things to do. Ministry. You're thinking about new levels. Starting your online business. Starting your ministry through Instagram, through Twitter, whatever it is. You're thinking about expansion. And you're thinking, I've been sitting down in EP for too long. Surely there must be other things to my life. Remember I said to you that even though I'm the pastor and in EP, my life is not limited to just being a pastor in EP. Take me out of EP, I must still be able to fulfill my ministry. Maybe some of you have been dreaming, you've been thinking, I need expansion. And you've been thinking about this purposeful dream. And you've been thinking about the need to maximize your capacity. And God is saying, I will go with you. Say with me, God will go with me. But please tell your neighbor, you need to ask him. Because sometimes God is a gentleman. Can I tell you that? He's a gentleman because he will not put his nose where he's not being invited. Sometimes we go and endeavor, we get on endeavors and we do certain things and we expect that God will just catch up with us. No, don't fool yourself. He, he will wait for you to ask him. And don't get halfway through the road, and say, Lord, where are you? Uh, Dad, you didn't ask me to come with you in the first place. 
they recognized the divine presence with them. They said, even though we desire to enlarge where we live, we want to go and cut trees by the, by the banks of Jordan. But they said, we will not leave this place. And I love how Jason started us off this morning. That we won't go if, you're, if you do not come with us. And they said, we need you to come with us. And Elisha said, I will go with you. And I call that purposeful association. May God, in this season of your life, connect you with people that will purposefully increase your capacity. May God, in this season of your life, bring you into relationship with people that will transform and change your life. And the Bible is so filled with people like that. When I think about People like Peter, who needs an Andrew. We talked about Simon Peter today. We talked about the great uh, uh, Apostle Peter. Do you know that Peter was not the one who met Jesus? It was Andrew who met Jesus. It was Andrew who went to Peter and said, we have met the one that Isaiah prophesied. Could this be the Christ? And Peter said, okay, let, let, let's go. May God bring you in contact with the Andrews of your life. May God, if you have made wrong choices, because you were led by the flesh, you were led by the visuals, and you made the wrong choice because he looks like Pengi and Lengi, and you made wrong choices, or the investment looked very great. You know, some people invested in cryptocurrencies, and the investment looked really economically profiting, or maybe the career at the time. I remember when I came to England, everyone said IT was a thing. God said to me, go into teaching. I said, I bind you, Satan, because teaching in Nigeria, they don't even pay them well. They owe them six months' salary. Why would I want to go into teaching when I'm coming from a country where they don't pay teachers well? But God said, go into teaching. I came to do organizational communication. I was going to go into advertising and public relations. And God said, go into teaching. May you hear the voice of the Lord telling you, this is the way, walk in it. Do you know that by going into teaching, you heard my story, just one year later, we were thinking about buying a house and we found a place that was willing to give 50% 50% deposit for teachers and 50% deposit for accountant. Wife is an accountant. Husband is a teacher. 0% deposit for the first mortgage in this country. Your God knows where you're going long before you even start. You need the Abrahams that will come and rescue the lots who has made wrong choices. You need in your life, you need the, the Aquila and Priscilla's. Regardless of your knowledge of the Bible, but wrong application of the Bible, you need the Aquilas and Priscilla's to put you right. I, I tremble when I read the scripture and it says, Apollos, a man great, a man mighty in scriptures. How does it get better than that? That someone is referred to as a man mighty in scriptures. And yet the man mighty in scriptures needed someone like Aquila and Priscilla to actually put him right. You may have the head knowledge of the Bible. Listen, God places people in your life who will show you the right application of the Bible so that you don't go into error. And you need to humble yourself and that you don't know anything. Because by the time they are done with you, you will think that, I thought I was mighty in the scripture, but I didn't know anything at all. May God bring the Aquilas and Priscilla's into your life in this season of your life. I pray for you, may God bring Nathan into your life. That you may be successful as a David and you are, you're killing it every day. You're killing it in boardroom. You're killing it in bedroom. You're killing it everywhere or your life. You're making success and they, all, all, the, all the tallies are going well with you and you're successful, you're, you're dreaming and your ambition is going very well. But you need a Nathan to actually say to you, thus says the Lord. May God bring the Mordecais of your life. The thing about the Mordecais is that they don't always look like the right package. Mordecai was not, Mordecai was just a servant in the palace. But listen, the Mordecais of this world, God has put certain wisdom in their mouth that they will guide the Esthers to how to live. Because really, your reputation and your skills may take you to the palace. You will need a godly character to stay there. The Mordecais of this life, they don't always look like the right package. But they've got the wisdom to keep the Esthers in the palace. When I think about Yusuf Laurent, he was just 18 years old when he met, when he met Dio. Now, 
when, when, Dior, when Dior took Yusuf Laurent as his apprentice, as an 18-year-old, you know, 18, that's when they think they know everything about the world. The only job that Dior used to give him was just minor thing, just like mundane thing. It's got nothing to do with fashion design. It's got nothing to do with cutting up clothes. It's got nothing. But you know what? Yusuf Laurent believed that I need to submit myself and learn everything from this man. It wasn't as if Dio was at the prime of his success. But guess what? Three years later, Dio died. And because the three years that Yusuf Laurent was with him, he was serving him faithfully. Listen, the camel you're watering today might be carrying the gift that belongs to you. Selah. Some of you, you only, you only want to serve when it is convenient. Some of you only want to do things because you just feel, well, it's not my thing anyway. You saw Laurent serve Christian Dior so well that three years ago, when Dior, three years later when Dior died, he left in his will that you saw Laurent should be made the head designer. The camel you're watering today in your places of work, in church, in your relationship, that camel, like Rebecca, that camel might be carrying the gifts and the treasures that one day become yours. The Mordecai's of this water. I'm rounding off very shortly. Give me just five minutes. When Richard Bronson met Freddie Laker, Freddie Laker was not doing very well, but even though he had this mindset about how, mindset about how to run a successful airline business, but when Richard Branson met him, he was humble enough to recognize that the Mordecai's of this world, they don't always come in the finished product. But you need to be humble to listen to their wisdom. And everything that Richard Branson, how many of you even know who Freddie Laker is? But when I say Sir Branson, you know who Richard Branson is. But he was humble enough to listen to everything that Freddie Laker was going to teach him. And today we learn about Virgin Media, Virgin Airlines, Virgin these and Virgin that. It came from a Freddie Laker who was on, on his way down in his business. Someone who was on his way up learned from someone who was on his way down. How odd is that? The Mordecai's of this world. The Mordecai's of and you can. I pray that God will bring the right mentors your way, the right helpers of vision, the Maya Angelo for the Oprah Winfrey's of this world, the, the Steve Jobs of the Mark Zuckerberg of this world. That God will bring them your way to maximize your capacity. To maximize your capacity. He said, I will go with you. I will go with you. At the same time, you need to kick the jo Jonas out of your life as well. Because listen, you can't, you can't sit down and be singing Kumbaya while the boat of your mental health is sinking and you're allowing the Jonah to stay in your life. You need to kick Jonahs out of your life as well because they're not going somewhere with you. So when your boat is sinking, learn to kick the Jonahs out. Keep the Mordecai's in your life and kick the Jonahs out. Oh, I wish I had time to tell you things today. That's the third thing, they, so as they were cutting and they, they were making a, you know, every effort to maximize their capacity, maybe at work, maybe at, at, in school, maybe as a parent, the Bible said the axe head fell into the river. Remember I told you different tools of capacity that, uh, to maximize your capacity that God will bring into your life. I talk about the tool of relationship, the tool of focus, the tool of time, the tool of fear of the Lord, the tool of influence that God will bring into your life. As they were cutting, as they were making every effort to expand their capacity, their spiritual capacity, their emotional capacity, the axe head fell into the river. And I know some of you have said, yeah, we know where this is going. He's going to talk about cutting edge. No, I'm not talking about the cutting edge. <laughs> but you see, the, the prophet said to them, show me where he fell. In other words, God, the, the prophet was simply saying, I need you to be responsible for the restoration. I need to take part in the restoration I'm about to bring into your life. We live in the generation that blames everything on everybody else. Never take responsibility. The next level that God is taking you and myself to, there will be times that he will ask you, where did he fall? And the next thing that happened, the Bible said the axe head floated. 
I pray that you will experience restoration in all areas of life. Some of you made the wrong investment, and that investment went pear-shaped. I'm trusting God that you will be restored on every side. Some of you met people that were right at the time, but it turned out to be wrong people. I trust God that will be restoration in your mental health. Some of you went into wrong career. It was good at the time. It was pain. You were killing it on every side, but it turned out to be a wrong decision. I pray there will be restoration that your axe head will float. In the name of Jesus, stand on your feet as we pray to round off today. We're just going to pray because it's the month of August. Can you take us straight, please, to the prayer point at the end? Thank you. And we're just going to pray for five things. We're going to pray that you will experience confidence of growth. We're going to pray that you will experience relationship reformation. We're going to pray that your competence will improve. We're going to pray that your character will be strengthened. We're going to pray that your commitment will be reorientated. Would you lift a voice right now and just lift your hand to the Lord? That in the season of August, as we are trusting God to maximize our capacity, we believe God that where we lack confidence, where we lack confidence to dream again, where we lack confidence to step out, of our comfort zones, where we lack confidence to actually make a new decision, where we lack confidence to even believe what God has promised. Lord, we trust you for confidence of growth. We believe you for relationship reformation. We trust you that the right people will begin to come into our lives and the wrong people will make their way out. Lord, you have promised that the children that we will have, after the ones we have lost, they will say in our ears, make for me a bigger room. And you said, those who will swallow us up, they will far from us. I pray over your people right now in the name of Jesus, that you will begin to add into their lives people that will add values to them. People with wisdom of God. People that will lead and guide them. The death rows of God. That will guide them on how to delegate. That will guide them on how to make decisions. That will guide them on how to maximize their gift and not burn themselves out. The death rose of God. I'm trusting you, Lord, that you will begin to bring the boars into the lives of our mature sisters. Who are believing you, oh God, for their own partners. That you will bring the Rebecca's into the life of our mature brothers. I'm trusting you, dear Father. That as you're bringing the Boazes into the life of the Ruth in this place, that every generational curse is cancelled. I'm trusting you, Father, that every reproach that Ruth might have carried as a Moabite, I stand upon the altar of the Lord right now. I believe you, whatever has been the hindrance in the lives of our sisters, I trust you that you, as you bring the Boaz into their lives, that every hindrance is cancelled from today. That every reproach is rolled away today. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. I'm believing you Lord that the wisdom, the skill that will improve our competence. That you will guide us to begin to go into them. That you will cause our competence level to rise this year. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. When, you, when your hand came upon a holy earth. The Bible says you gave the wisdom to build the ark in the wilderness. I pray, dear Father, that your hand will come upon your people afresh. That the wisdom to do the unusual will be released to the lives of your people. That you will breathe life into our competence level. That it will increase and exponentially grow in the name of the Lord Jesus. I pray, dear Father, that our character will be strengthened. But adventure, there are areas where we are compromising the standard of God. That we're doing church and we're doing the world at the same time. Lord, I pray that you will give us the understanding that what shall it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul. That you will give us a mindset to remember like David said, blessed is the man who does not sit in the seat of the wicked, who does not stand with the scornful, but daily meditate in the word of the Lord, standing with the righteous, that you will cause our character to be strengthened, 
that righteousness and holiness will be the desire of our heart in this new season. And we pray, dear Father, that you will help us to be more committed to you. That our stewardship level will take a higher turn. That we will be faithful in giving. That will be faithful in generosity. That will be faithful in showing compassion. That will be faithful in showing empathy. That will be faithful in loving other people. That will be faithful in the way we're committed to serving you. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we believe you. In the year 2021, that as a church, that our members will be consistent with their prayer life. That there will be deeper discipleship. We pray for a release and deployment of spiritual gifts in the life of your church. We pray for advancement in our earning skills. We believe you, Lord, that our personal brand development will increase and exponentially grow in the name of Jesus. I believe you, Lord, that there will be improvement in our relationship skills. I pray that husband will love their wife as Christ loved the church. I pray that wife will submit to their husband and see God, Jesus, in their husband. I pray that children will honor their parents. I pray that Fathers will not, lead, will not provoke their children unto wrath. I pray that husband and wife will love one another and be accountable to the Lord Jesus. I pray, dear Father, in our relationship, it will be an oasis of love. I pray for productivity in all our relationship. I pray for mindset, mental health that is balanced in all our relationship. In the name of Jesus, and I pray for your health over our lives, that regardless of the, the, the variance, regardless of the infirmities, regardless of the sickness, we declare by your word a thousand before by our side and ten thousand by our, by our right hand. Only with our eyes would we see the fall of the wicked, that no evil will come near your people and no plague will come near our dwelling. I commend you to God and to the word of his grace that as you go into the month of August, that it will keep you, it will bless you, that will cause his favor to shine upon you, that it will be gracious unto you, and it will show you his peace. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and your loved ones in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.